think uh, there are sort of several approaches to this. The first one is that I don't bring it up unless patients bring it up. So it's not one of the things that I say in our, you know, what about screening for prostate cancer and then go into a big spiel about it. Um, if patients don't bring it up, I don't think we need to mention it. Uh, however, uh, there are of course quite a lot of men who have come in and want to ask about it. And then, uh, then what I do is I try and provide a balanced view of the information about prostate cancer screening um, and set it out in terms of harms and benefits. And, and present it to them, and, and then they can kind of make the decision about whether they want to go ahead or not. And that's, that's basically what I do. It d does take a long time to explain it, and I think the, there are several things to, to say about this. First of all, there are a lot of decision aids around. Um, I'm at the moment in the middle of, of, um, of uh, preparing a paper, uh, which I hope will be published soon, and in it I've got an expert in communicating information to patients as one of the authors in it. And we hope that there'll be that, that there will kind of handout that we can give give patients that will be helpful. Um, I've also designed a form, uh, uh, sorry, a figure, um, which which sets out what happens if you have screening, and what happens if you don't have screening. What are the risks? And I've tried to set out the numbers, you know, the actual quantities of what will happen this way and what will happen that way. Um, and to my mind, uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually an eligible person for a PSA screening test. Um, I, I've elected not to have it. Um, but you know, I understand that there are patients who've got particular horrors of it, of prostate cancer, and they're prepared to put up with a lot of the costs, a lot of the, the downsides of being screened. And and I understand that, and I respect that, and I'm happy to discuss that with patients and and even go through with screening if that's what they want to do. So the first reason is why is a diversity of opinions, and th that's because um, different doctor groups think differently. Um, that there are as many opinions as doctors when it comes down to it, and everyone wants to analyze the raw data and come up with their own conclusions. This is one of those rare situations where the, the adage, a stitch in time saves nine, doesn't seem to work. It's counterintuitive. In, in nearly all other cases, not all, but in many other cases, um, detecting a disease early provides benefits downstream. And prostate cancer doesn't look as if it does. And that's because of a number of separate factors. The screening test, PSA plus digital rectal examination, isn't a very good test at detecting it. Um, it turns out that prostate cancer itself is an extraordinarily diverse disease and incredibly common. In people my age, over the age of 60, um, more than 50% of people have got prostate cancer. I've got a more than even chance of having prostate cancer as I stand here talking to you. But it, it, the odds are that, that what I, whatever I've got is never going to bother me. And going and looking for it and detecting it will actually make my life worse. And then finally, the empirical trials, there have been quite a few now, which have actually done you know, a randomized controlled trial to see whether screening versus not screening provides benefits, um, don't give us a clear answer. Some screens show benefit, some screens show harm. And uh, if you put them all together, if you meta-analyze the data together, it looks like they don't provide any benefit. The other thing is that the treatment for prostate cancer is harmful. I mean, all treatments are harmful, but the treatment, particularly for prostate cancer, uh, seems to be more harmful than most. It, 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 uh, it causes a lot of, I mean, the diagnosis, just the label, Time. We know that suicide rates go up seven times in the week after a diagnosis of people with prostate cancer. We know that cardiovascular events happen much more, three times more often than people who've just been told they've got cancer. So just the label is bad for you. The process of the diagnosis is unpleasant. Prostate biopsies aren't fun, they're significantly harm. Um, and then the actual surgery itself causes harm. If people know that it causes impotence in most people, it causes urinary incontinence in most men. Last, you know, perhaps a majority of men get better after two years, but it's it's uh, incontinence until that time. And some men also get uh, fecal incontinence. So this is, I think, can seriously affect your your quality of life. And if you're going to have that treatment, and you happen to have the most likely kind of cancer that would never have bothered you, then you've undergone all that harm for no benefit. So it, is, it doesn't seem to be that helpful. Right. Right. I mean, 
I, I'm, I'm very hopeful that we will get to a consensus in the future. We're at the moment working, uh, there's a group of us forming soon um, under the auspices of the Australian Prostate Cancer Society um, and we hope to produce guidelines which satisfy the GPs um, as well as the specialists and urologists. Um, and the pathologists are involved in this. Um, but it is, it is unfortunate that different, different Royal Colleges have provided different sets of guidelines and recommendations, and I agree that this is suboptimal for the practicing GP. We should do something better.